Go to callers. Let's head to New York. And Emmy, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Well, Emmy, you're on the air. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you. Okay. Um, I just have uh, two simple questions today. I'm trying to understand a little bit better about uh, gluten and uh, oil. Because um, I know you've been talking about how bad gluten is. And I just okay. want to make sure for a, a normal person, like a healthy person, is that okay to still eating something to have gluten in it, or is it definitely you want to avoid it? Because, I mean, is it, did their body produce something to digest the gluten or not? And that's my uh, first question. Okay, well, the first, one, the answer, wait a minute, one, one question at a time. Uh, the answer to the first question will be a little sort of tortuous here, so I'm going to answer some of it, and then I'm going to give some of it the short answer. And at, at this point, there, there are people who claim that they have enzymes that will break down gluten, which is a protein. It will. Uh, gluten, gluten can be broken up into the amino acids uh, by enzymes, but there's that caveat is nothing's 100%. So a percentage is going to slip through. Uh, when you're talking about biological systems, percentages will slip through. So if a person is uh, sensitive to gluten, which like 85 to 90% of Americans are, or if you're dating somebody or you're married to somebody, um, who has a gluten intolerance, you still don't want to be eating gluten because of cross-contamination in the laundry, the, the um, uh, food preparation surface, the couches where people sit and watch TV, the beds they sleep in together, and so on, mother-in-law. I mean, it can be nobody in the house eating gluten if there's somebody in the house who is gluten intolerant. And um, let's see here, Char, uh, what, what's the best way to learn where you're going to find gluten that you don't know about? Listen to the CD, Serial Killers. Okay, very good, Serial Killers. That CD will teach you all the hidden places that you run into gluten. And, you know, you're talking about they use gluten to, to thicken chicken rice soup or chicken vegetable soup. You don't think you're going to have rice, uh, you, uh, wheat in there, but they use it as a thickener. Same way with gravy, soups, uh, things like meatloaf, meatballs, dog food, cat food, kind of that kind of stuff. And so you just have to watch it. It's in everything. You have to read labels. When it says gluten-free, naturally gluten-free, then you roll it over in the back, you look at the allergy stuff, and it says these nuts are packaged, which are gluten-free, or packaged on equipment that also packages wheat products. And so the dust in the bag is wheat dust, even though the nuts started out gluten-free, but now they've been contaminated because of the machinery they were packaged on. So you've got to be aware of all that kind of stuff. And um, gluten intolerance will cause a um, uh, damage to, uh, to the lining of the intestines, Okay, which reduces the efficiency of absorption. Char, you've seen people with really severe gluten problems. How many diseases did they have? There was a lady in, in Canada that had 22 diagnosed diseases. Yeah, and she was seeing 17 specialists on 27 prescription drugs because she couldn't absorb. The, every one of those 22 diseases was a nutritional deficiency disease because she couldn't absorb nutrients because of her gluten intolerance. And so this is very, this is a very life-threatening thing. And so it's not something simple like, oh, I just get a little rash on my little finger. That, that's not quite what you're looking at here. Okay, second question. Yeah, thank you so much for answering that question, Dr. Wallace. And the second one is um, uh, that you talked about oil and how bad it is, and I totally understand and agree with you that fry food is really bad. But, I, uh, we, we, you know, I read a lot of books about uh, how good the coconut oil when you eat it fresh. So is that a problem with eating that without frying that, with, you know, with the coconut oil or – or they're still bad. Yeah, the only way coconut oil would be um, safe would be for you to pick the coconut off the tree, mash the coconut, get the oil yourself, and use it immediately. If, okay. it, if it's sitting there for 10 minutes, it's already oxidized. Okay? Okay. And it's, it's, it's very, very, very fragile. And um, I mean, look at these island people who live a lot on coconut. They eat a lot of coconut as part of their traditional diets. Mm -hmm. uh, obesity is a big thing with them. They tend to be a couple hundred pounds overweight. They die at a very early age of heart disease, diabetes, all this kind of stuff, Cardio, cardiovascular disease because of the clogged arteries as a result of inflammation uh, from using coconut oil and everything. And so it's not safe. Just because somebody says, hey, it really tastes great and it's good for cooking, well, you know, it may be good for the mechanics of cooking and the, and the food looks good and tastes good, but it will kill you, Okay. And we're talking about microwave popcorn. We're talking about theater popcorn, olive oil, coconut oil, margins, mayonnaise, salad dressing, cooking oils. All of these things are extremely dangerous, extremely dangerous. I cannot uh, um, emphasize that enough, I guess is the word I'm looking at. I, I can't emphasize that enough. And when you look at clogged arteries, it has nothing to do with cholesterol. It has to do with trans fatty acids, heterocyclic amines, acrylamides, 
which come from oxidized oils. So even, you know, you go to a restaurant and they have a, a bottle of coconut oil or extra, extra, extra virgin, virgin, virgin olive oil on the table with some vinegar so you can uh, make your own um, salad dressing. The white vinegar is made from wheat, and then the oil is oxidized because it's in a clear glass and the light is oxidizing it at room temperature. It's been out there all day from 9 o'clock or 7 o'clock in the morning. You come in at dinner time and use some of that olive oil that's been sitting on the table there all day, and it gets put in the back of the room probably for a month, and they just keep topping it off as it gets used. It is nothing but oxidized oil, okay? And so these things are extremely dangerous. And I, I just, um, you know, I hope that you appreciate. Now, I really thank you for asking these questions. And, again, uh, Char said I would get a hold of that CD, uh, Serial Killers, to find out where you find all the hidden gluten. But get a hold of the book, Epigenetics, The Death of the Genetic Theory of Disease Transmission, and uh, get a hold of the book, um, Hell's Kitchen, and y you will just be amazed at the information we have on what oxida oxidation does. I wrote my first paper on that subject in 1971. Okay, clogged arteries have nothing to do with cholesterol. It has to do with eating oxidized oils and fried foods and that sort of stuff. So um, there's nothing good about it, okay? Uh, you know, somebody out there just decided, hey, I, I'm a chef. It smells good. It tastes good. Maybe it makes the finished food looks good. It's a good presentation. Um, and, of course, find me one of these chefs who lives to be 100. You know, they all die. In fact, one of the top organic food chefs in Canada who is the personal chef of the Queen of England, a couple of years ago, he died of 54 of a, of a heart attack because he cooked in all these oils. And so um, just because they say it, whoever they are, just because it tastes good, just because it smells good, just because it looks good doesn't mean it's good. But good question.